Hey Marco, you ready to go on a camping trip? You ready to get out on the road and go? So this is our Thor Chateau 24F. It's a Class C. It's about 25 feet from front bumper to back bumper. So let me go around here and show you probably what I think is the biggest complaint that uh, I've heard and it's a really big complaint of mine and as we get in the driver's seat here and that's the leg room let me climb up in here <laughs> okay I'm in the driver's seat and uh, you can see I put my foot down there by the accelerator but my foot on the gas my foot or my leg is is bent like crazy um, I'm sitting here I feel like I'm hunched over the wheel and uh, I've got the seat back as far as it'll go and you just don't have any leg room that's typical of a class C um, they're all built or most of them the class C's are built on either a Chevy or a Ford chassis uh, the Fords are this is a Ford and they're they're all pretty much like this inside regardless of the length you get but the class C built on this Ford uh, E350 E450 chassis is is going to be pretty similar so I'm sitting in the driver's seat let me get back here and I'll show you why you can't get the seat back any further and the way they design these is there's a piece of trim on the slide on the front edge of the slide here as you can see the driver's seat when it's back all the way it's right here it's touching this piece of trim so you can't go back any further with the seat even the passenger seat is comes back further but the driver's seat has the penalty of not having enough leg room so let me show you what I did so let's go back around to the driver's seat and uh, to solve this it's pretty much a two-part problem first off I had to figure out a way to actually get the driver's seat to move back farther because it was limited on the way they had it mounted here um, it's it's so far forward in the mounting to the the chassis the frame and everything that the seat just wouldn't it wouldn't come back any further and that's problem number one problem number two is just what I showed you inside with the, the seat back hitting that trim so to tackle the problem with getting the seat to move back um, I found on another forum I, I for the life of me I can't remember uh, where it was and everything, but I do want to admit this is not an original idea of mine. I, I saw the idea on a forum and I just went ahead and uh, Kind of made it work. I thought well that looks like a good idea so to start with um, I don't have any special mechanical skills. I don't have any special tools um, This can be done with nothing more than a hacksaw a drill um, I think I used a jigsaw, some uh, wood glue, and some pliers, miscellaneous tools that you'd have that the typical homeowner would have. So, like I said, nothing special. So, the post that I found used a product, these rails, it's called Unistrut. They're typically used to hang machinery from a ceiling or something like that. You can see the slots here. Um, what I did, I bought a five foot length of that on Amazon and I measured this frame that the seats mounted on front to back and cut me two pieces of this unistrut that's about the same length as this frame. One for this side and one for the other side and I looked at the size of the bolts that Ford had used and you can see them right here these are the Ford original factory bolts these were through the seat frame here okay is right there that's the where the frame is or the seat 
You can see the black railing inside there if you look. But there's holes there through that. These bolts go through there. Then the original, the holes in the frame are right here. So that seat was originally a little bit further forward. So obviously to do this, I had to take the seat off and that was step one really. So um, there's four bolts that hold the seat on. One here, um, one in the back back there, and two matching ones on the other side. So you take those four bolts out. The seat's really not that heavy, but uh, I just took the seat out and took it inside and set it upside down on the, on the uh, table. then I had access to the frame. So what I did, I measured the distance between these holes that Ford had drilled in this seat frame from here, front to back. And then I measured a corresponding thing. I figured, well, I want to move this seat back and I calculated about an inch and a half. So from there, and you can see where this hole is here, where that bolt comes through, that's about an inch and a half. Had I if if I could do this over, I'd probably go a little more, maybe two inches, give even a little more room uh, moving the seat back. But this distance seems to work really well. Um, I'm happy with it. So what I did is on the, the Unistrut, um, like I said, I cut these the same length as this frame, measured from the front of this frame here back to where the, the hole was drilled in this, drilled that hole, in the Unistrut. Um, did the same thing on the back, drilled a matching hole back there. Then I figured, okay, I want to move this back an inch and a half, so I measured from the top here, this from this hole, back to this hole here, and drilled a hole there in the top. Did the same thing there, and obviously the distance between the, the holes has to be, you know, what the Ford factory distance was. So then after I had the, uh, you know, had the Unistrut cut the length, two pieces, uh, four holes drilled in each one of them, two for the holes to mount to the frame, two holes on top to mount the seat again. Um, before I mounted it, I laid it out and uh, hit it with a coat of some black, flat black spray paint that I had. Uh, just wanted to use that up. Just kind of pretty it up a little bit. Uh, went to the hardware bought a four sets of uh, a bolt, two washers, a lock washer, and a nut. Uh, that made a set. That bolt comes up from the bottom. There's a flat washer on it. Um, then there's another flat washer here, a lock washer, and a nut. And that's how I secured the Unistrut to this, this frame. And it is, it's really sturdy. And then I used the original Ford um, bolt and, and uh, nut here uh, to mount the seat to the top of the Unistrut. And uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention was before I painted this Unistrut, I took a file and filed these edges where I cut this just so they weren't so sharp. You know, took, kind of took that sharp edge off of them with a file. And uh, it'll keep you from, like, if you hit your leg or something on that, it wouldn't be so sharp. But uh, do that before you paint them and uh, just make it a little nicer. So that solved my problem of having the seat go forward and, uh, or back far enough. So let's go around and uh, see how I solved the problem with the trim. So here with uh, part two of our problem is this trim piece. Uh, now I got the uh, Unistrut and everything mounted there so I can actually get the seat back further, but I still have the problem of hitting this trim piece. 
So let me show you what I did. Um, I've got this mounted on there so I can just take it right off. And what I have, what I've done is <clears throat> behind that trim piece is a piece of board. It's called OSB oriented strand board. And it serves no structural purpose whatsoever other than holding this piece of trim on. So um, cutting this where I notched this out um, didn't affect the structure of the slide or anything like that at all. Um, like I said, it's purely cosmetic. Um, I've heard people say, well, you can't modify that because it'll uh, change the structure of the slide. Well, that's just not true if you look at it. Um, the slide is its own unit. It's, it, this OSB is mounted here with these screws and I could not get those out. They are in there tight. They're, they're drilled. They're uh, some kind of metal screw that's drilled right into the end of the slide here. Um, but like I said, this is just meant to cover cover up the end of that slide so it doesn't look so ugly and everything. So what I did was, um, you know, this is obviously, I've, I've painted this. This was kind of a pine color, kind of a light color, typical of what you would see is with OSB. And I measured down, I figured I wanted to make a notch about right here. Um, I figured I wanted to round this. If I ever wanted to stick my head in there or something or my hand, uh, you don't have a sharp edge where you're banging your, your head or your hand on it. So I just kind of drew me out a pencil line, figured out about where the slide was back here. Um, and I cut it flush with that slide. I put a piece of tape on there to protect that on the slide paint so that the uh, jigsaw blade wouldn't hit it. So just put some tape on that. Measured that back to see how thick that was. And I just took my jigsaw and cut that. Cut it all the way down. Down to here, did the same thing. Made another round corner. Went down to the floor. I left this section down here wide and this section up here at the top wide because I wanted something sturdy for that piece of trim to stick back onto. And after I got it all cut, I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Um, got all the rough stuff off with, I think I used some sandpaper or a wood file or whatever. Um, it's hidden anyway, so it really doesn't matter. And then I went to the uh, fabric store and got this uh, Velcro. And you can see I've got a matching piece on the back here. Um, the gray that you see around this, it's a product called Fuse It. It's made by Liquid Nails. It's a construction adhesive. The uh, adhesive they put on the back of this Velcro will not hold. It's just like sticky tape and it, it won't hold for anything. So it has to be on there permanently. So I mounted three pieces of Velcro. So you can see one at the bottom. One right there at the middle, and one up the top. Matching on the trim piece. One in the middle, one at the bottom. One up the top. And now, whenever I move the seat back, you can see how much room I've got there. Let me sit down. Get back in the driver's seat here. I can reach down here move this seat all the way back reach over here and tip the seat back a little bit and now you can see with me sit sitting in the seat my leg I've got a lot more room I mean I can put my foot under the gas pedal I mean it's it's under the gas pedal there now but I can almost straighten my legs completely out and like I said I'm six foot one and I'm back from the, you can see how my arms are, <laughs> I can almost straighten my arms out, but I'm not hunched over the steering wheel. I can sit back. And then the bonus is uh, by putting 
that unistrut down there, it's it's about an inch and a half tall itself. So it it actually raised the seat up. So not only is the seat back further, it's up a little bit. So it it gives you a you know a commanding view. Your legs are are comfortable. Um, it's just a win-win. And you can see here, I've got plenty. I've got plenty of headroom. Um, it doesn't didn't really affect that either. So how do you go about getting this uh, trim piece off? Well, what I did, this square piece up here, this piece of trim on the corner, um, these are just nailed in there with little flimsy nails. Um, you can take any, like a small screwdriver up here at the top and just very carefully um, pry that out. That comes right off. Um, this trim piece here was actually two pieces. The center piece was tacked onto this big one. And what they did was they put this main wide piece, you can still see here all the staple holes down the middle. So what they did, they put this piece up there, stapled it all the way down, and then they came back with this center piece. Let me show you here, see if I can get it to focus. But if you see here, sorry about the shaky camera, right here, this little decorative trim piece in the middle, they used that to cover up all their staple holes down through there. And that center piece was just tacked in there with maybe about two or three uh, little tiny nails. So what I did since I wasn't going to staple that back on there, I just ran a bead of wood glue all the way down behind that and glued that piece back in there permanently. So it's there's no need to take it off anymore. Uh, it's stuck on there. So so after I got that off, I pulled all the staples out. This this pries off the same way. Um, it was up on there like that. It was after you get those staples exposed, you just start working your way down, and this this thing just pries off real easy. These motor homes are pretty much put together with staples anyway, so pretty easy to get that off. Pull all the staples out. Um, then I did all this with the OSB. Like I showed earlier, I, I notched that out and everything so the seat would fit. Um, I had some really dark, almost black stain laying around, left over, and I just slapped that on there to kind of make it look a little darker to blend in. Um, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, so there you go. So what we do is, uh, when I'm driving... I'm in the position here now. This is, is the way we have it when we're driving. That's just open like that. Seats back, plenty of leg room. And um, let me show you where I put this piece of uh, trim for storage while we're driving. So while we're driving, there's a handy place to put the ladder. Um, I just hooked the ladder right over the top of this uh, piece of vinyl pad here. The trim piece. Just sits right there behind the ladder. It's not going anywhere. Um, so that just sits neatly right there. And then when we get to our uh, campsite, um, I run the slide out and I'll show you that. First thing I do is I move the seat back a little bit away from that. Just, I just flipped it up like the back a little bit to get it out of the way. Then we run the slide out. Okay, there we have it with the slide all the way out. Then I take a piece of trim. Top edge goes right up under there. Um, get the curtain out of the way there. And I just take my foot, push that Velcro in down there. Velcro at the top. One in the middle. And bingo. Uh, we've got our trim piece right back in. 
just looks like factory. Oh, one point that I didn't mention. This corner piece up here, um, after I, the, it's, it's in with a couple, I think about four, like these long staple nails. And I just bent those over and I used that Fuse It product, same thing that I put the Velcro on with. Put about four dabs of that on there and then I took some spring clamps and clamped it overnight. And that's on there permanently now. That's not going anywhere. There's no, no reason to take that off either. So um, I forgot to mention that earlier. So there you have it. That's my take on uh, fixing the problem with the leg room in a Class C. Um, if you have any comments, uh, please leave them. And uh, I certainly hope this helps someone. It's not too hard of a project for the average person with average mechanical skills. Um, but boy, I tell you, it really solves the problem with the, the, the leg room. It makes it a lot more comfortable to drive if you're... Uh, you know, like I said, I'm I'm six one, but anyone that's six foot or over is going to have cramped legs, probably driving one of these Class Cs. But anyway, thanks, folks. Hope that helps someone.